Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome. We're going to get started with our program, if we may. Uh, you're, gonna, you're going to be fed today. You will get a main course. Uh, desserts in front of you as well. Um, uh, we're just uh, we're all getting back to face-to-face -face events and stretching our wings again. So, a round of applause again for face-to-face -face events, please. I mean, it's really important. <laughs> I'm Danny Seabright, president of the US UAE Business Council. We're the bilateral uh, business council between the US and the UAE, and we work very, very closely with our amazing partner, the American Chamber in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Liz Benetsky will speak in a moment and introduce herself, uh, but, our, but the CEO, president of the, of the uh, AmCham here in Abu Dhabi, just an amazing partner. And we're so excited getting back to face-to-face -to -face, uh, and being able to do events together on the ground here uh, in Abu Dhabi with Liz and her amazing team. An amazing team at the Rosewood. Rosewood is our member, uh, both our member and Liz's member at the AmCham, and so we really appreciate uh, all of the, the wonderful work uh, that the hotel's doing to make this event happen for uh, uh, the undersecretary today. Um, I have to also shout out uh, some U.S. and UAE government officials in the room from the United States. Of course, we have our charge, uh, Sean Murphy, at the head table. Sean, stand up, take a bow. Uh, <laughs> Sean leads an amazing team of American uh, diplomats here, not only in Abu Dhabi, but the Consul General in Dubai, which Liz and I work very, very closely with and are very happy to partner with on many, many events. Uh, most notably, Thomas Bruns and his team in the commercial office here in Abu Dhabi and the team that he has in Dubai. And we really, really appreciate the partnership with you and your team, Thomas. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thomas, take a bow, Thomas. If you, by the way, if you don't have Thomas's business card, um, he's, his and the next person I'm going to mention are the two most important business cards to have in the room today, from my, from my opinion. Um, they're the ones that are really going to help you day to day persistently on the ground. So Thomas, thank you. Uh, Saud al Nawais, who just stepped out for an important phone call, probably from the Crown Prince or someone like that, uh, will be back in in a moment. Uh, but Saud is the commercial counselor in the embassy in, Abu, uh, in Washington, D.C., excuse me, working for Ambassador Alateba. Uh, and Saud and I have been in the job together uh, since the very beginning. Saud came, to, the, came to, the, to Washington the same year that I did in 2008 uh, to take, when I took over this position. So we really appreciate having Saud here with us today. He's the other person in the room whose business card you need to grab uh, going out the door. Uh, and then our amazing board of directors from my side, and I'll turn it over to Liz to introduce her board. But uh, uh, Hannah R Rastamani from First Abu Dhabi Bank sitting in the center. Hannah, please. Hannah is the, please, please. Hannah is the uh, executive vice chairman of our board of directors. And, uh, with, and First Abu Dhabi Bank is such an amazing institution here in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. And we really appreciate the leadership and the support that you're providing to us. Thank you very much. And we have many, many other companies in the room represented on our board. Uh, they're also Liz's members at the AmCham. And I think that's a good segue to turn over to Liz and let her make some opening remarks. Thank you, Danny. And this is the debut of the Liz and Danny show because it's the first time we've been on stage together. Thank you, Danny, for your most kind remarks. And it is wonderful to see everyone in person. It's indeed a pleasure to connect all with you again. And most importantly, Danny, to partner with you on this and other endeavors as we move forward. We are continually fighting, fighting is the key word, every day to foster this most important bilateral trade relationship from the ground up. And so this is a very meaningful visit to have the Madam Undersecretary here with us. So once again, my heartfelt good afternoon to your excellencies, Madam Undersecretary, our Charge de Fer Murphy, Mr. Bruns and his team, our dear brother Saud, who's come in from DC, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank four of my board members in the room today, starting with my chairman of the board, Mr. Jay Houston from Raytheon Emirates. We have Ms. Christina Struler from UPS, Ms. Courtney Sater from the Raytheon Emirates, and Ms. Yvette Campbell from the American Community School. It is indeed a pleasure to have them join us, as well as our many joint members and unique members together. But we're not the star of the show. The lady in the middle is. So allow me to give a quick introduction. 
It is absolutely my pleasure, pleasure to introduce to you Ms. Lago. Now, I might add, she has been working a lot these past few days as I had the ability to see just what a force of nature this lady really is. We were in Trade Winds just a few days ago, and Trade Winds was the first regional and most important trade conference where over 200 delegates met in Dubai, and Madam Undersecretary was certainly working the room, and I thank her for taking the time to visit us here in Abu Dhabi despite your very busy schedule. Now, Ms. Lago was appointed by President Joseph R. Biden and sworn in on just December 28, 2021. And as the Undersecretary of Commerce for International Trade, her role is to lead the federal government's efforts to assist American businesses entering or expanding into international markets and to enforce fair trade policies and to promote travel and tourism to the United States and of course, our products and services overseas. I could go on and on about her background and experience, but I think we want to spend more time, Ms. Lago, about your impressions of your visit to the UAE and to Abu Dhabi on this trip today. So with that, I'm going to ask Danny to ask the first question. Thanks, Liz. Um, I think it was one of uh, uh, Thomas's team that used the word stamina the other night in a meeting, uh, Under Secretary, with how, how well you've uh, met the pressures of this very, very busy trip. Um, you've had an amazing whirlwind trip to the UAE over the last three days, including multiple events and meetings in Dubai and today in Abu Dhabi. You were at the world's greatest show, Expo 2020. Uh, I know you met with a number of uh, UAE ministers, including one that I understand from your team was very noteworthy, the, ministry of, uh, the Minister of AI. Um, and you, although you've been to the UAE before, it's been a while. What has impressed you or struck you as very, very significant in the development of the, of the country since you were here last? Please. Well, thank you for that question. Here I thought I was coming to a state business event, and instead it's the Liz and Danny show, so <laughs> I am so glad to be here. Um, this trip to the UAE is actually my first ever trip, domestic or international, in my new job. In, the, in this job. In this job. And significantly, it is the first time I've been on an airplane since November 2019. And you're talking to someone who, during her seven years at the US Treasury Department, traveled over a million miles. So I was so glad to break that dry spell and to be able to come to the UAE. Um, this is the end of a four-day, absolutely jam-packed trip um, in meeting with the business community, and I'm glad that it's ending here in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's tiring, for sure, but it's also energizing to have the opportunity to meet with U.S. government business leaders and also with the UAE public and private sectors. I know that His Excellency was called out, and you said possibly by the Crown Prince. I think so. It was called out by the Crown Prince, yes. And um, I have the good fortune that I suspect that my ultimate leader is sound asleep, so I don't expect to be called out. <laughs> so I was last in the UAE more than 10 years ago, and I am just stunned by the changes, starting with the built environment. I'm a native New Yorker. So I love skyscrapers, I love skylines, and you don't just have one, you have multiple skylines. The other thing is that I have been with my architect husband for 48 years, and so I've gotten used to enjoying architecture, and you have some extraordinary, and what I love about the buildings is that they just span the decades, and as you continue to grow, the buildings continue to um, innovate as well. I've seen buildings ranging from the Sheikh, um, the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque to Expo 2020 Dubai, where building after building knocks your lights out. Um, and I went to the Burj Khalifa because I wanted to see the building, but caring about the economy, and as you said, travel and tourism, some people might have been annoyed to have to wait online for an hour. I looked at it and said, yes, the tourism economy is rebounding. Um, I've also been impressed by the diversity of the people and the absolute warmth which, with, with which we've been received. 
Um, I found a lot of common ground here. Uh, the enthusiasm in both the public sector and the private sector to partner with us, whether it's G to G, B to B, G to B, um, the meeting with the sovereign wealth funds, there is just this eagerness to collaborate. Um, and I also am pleased that the engagement is a two-way street. I know that I have learned so much from my UAE counterparts, and I certainly hope that the visit, my visit added value, if only because it gave so many people another opportunity to interact with Thomas and his team because It's they, all about Thomas, okay. <laughs> we know that. Um, I have to say that I am even maybe a little bit envious of the UAE that you are so forward looking in your government that you have a ministry of AI. Um, I, it's gonna be interesting to see how other governments, whether and how other governments um, follow in your footsteps. Now look, in the United States, at the federal level, we have a very large government, and sometimes we may not be as agile, but we are so buttressed by our business community, by the private sector. Um, your creativity, your innovation, helps us immeasurably. Um, the other thing that I was struck by is that both of us are countries that are extremely globalized. If you look at the UAE, your geographical location is connecting continents. You have embraced so many different cultures. Um, and so the openness and interconnectedness has been part of our success, but it also exposes us to global risks. And so I think that I welcome the opportunity to work together on mitigating them. Um, in meeting after meeting, I heard about how the pandemic exposed risks in the supply chain. That's no secret. But there was a lot of mention of risk of food security, of risks in the food supply chain. And I have to say, for someone who spent the pandemic running a planning department in New York City, that so resonated. We absolutely took for granted that you would go to your corner bodega and anything that you wanted would be there. And so I think that we will never again, I hope, take for granted our food supply chain. So we need to invest. Um, the other thing that I was so struck by, I work for a secretary who cares about results. She doesn't care about meetings. She doesn't care about targets. She wants the outcomes. And the fact that so many government ministers mentioned KPIs, <laughs> I know that Gina Raimondo was back in Washington smiling about that. Um, the final takeaway has to do with the need for consistent standards. Um, because both of us are in this interconnected global economy. And I hope that we learn from the lessons of the past. When there was a breakthrough technology, electricity, the world was a different place. Country after country ran to develop its system of electricity distribution. And shame on us if we don't learn the lesson from the fact that traveling here, I had to bring an electricity converter. When it comes to the new knowledge economy, let's make sure that with respect to data, we don't end up with fractured flows, that we instead work together to have consistent standards. So I hope that's what you were looking for. That was wonderful, thank you. So the next thing we'd like to know Madam Undersecretary, is as the senior U.S. administration official at the Department of Commerce responsible for international trade, thinking back, perhaps you could tell us what were the goals of your visit, and maybe that's changed a little? Well, you actually laid out the goals for the visit, Liz, when you introduced me, because they are at the heart of what the International Trade Administration at Commerce, what ITA does. We advance U.S. companies' interests globally. We promote exports. We deepen 
US trade and commercial ties across the globe. And that is the outward looking. We also promote foreign direct investment into the US. And we do this all on behalf of US businesses and workers. To take it down from that level, which is more at the mission statement level, um, we look to create enabling business environments around the world. We know that not all countries are as forward-looking as the UAE. Um, we also look to level the playing field um, for US businesses and workers. We know that when there's a level playing field, our businesses and workers can compete and succeed. Um, we engage in commercial advocacy on behalf of US businesses that are seeking government procurement contracts. And underlying it all is this desire to promote economic recovery, but learning the lessons of inequality that exist in both of our countries, we are so focused on advancing equitable economic recovery. Now, when it comes to very specific, again, you explained. I was here for the trade wins. And 140 different US companies. It is the largest trade wins delegation ever. And I think it's a testament to the ties between the US and the UAE and the opportunities that our businesses see here. I want to give a special shout out to the 27 women-owned businesses who were part of this delegation. Um, it is the first time ever that we have included, as part of Trade Wins, an integrated agenda focused on the empowerment of women entrepreneurs. And those sessions were absolutely electrifying. Um, the fact that this is occurring um, in the midst of what in the US is um, Women's History Month makes it all the more um, special. And the fact that it's occurring in the UAE, which has so focused on advancing women. I have been very struck by the number of women in the UAE government who are in policy-making positions. Um, another reason for coming is to build on the already strong bilateral relationship that we have with the government of the UAE. Um, it's already close. But relationships, I've been with my husband for 48 years. I know it takes work to nurture a relationship. Um, and again, in my meetings with my counterparts across a range of different agencies, I've been struck by the expertise, but also by the warmth that characterizes the relationship. Um, Secretary Raimondo was here for just a little bit over 24 hours. And she came representing President Biden at the National Day celebration at Expo 2020 Dubai. But during that time, she, I had the opportunity to sit in as a backbencher as she met with the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs. Um, I went on to meet with Thomas and the rest of the team, and it's a team both from here in the Emirates and a large team that we brought from Washington. We went on to meet with the Minister of Artificial Intelligence, the head of cyber security, the um, a representative of the Ministry of Industry and Advanced Technology, and also with ADQ and Mubadala. So it is a diverse array, and the topics represent the breadth of the economic relationship. Um, we talked about trade and investment. We talked about opportunities where we could cooperate, including where we face common and incredibly complex global challenges. And this is nearing the end of the trip, but still on the agenda for the rest of today. We'll be visiting Mazdar. And is it Enec or Enec? Enoch. Enoch. OK, thank you. And also Honeywell and Lockheed. And I have to say, as I was a STEM girl before STEM was a term. Uh, I graduated with a degree in physics in 1977. And I have always loved seeing our industries that create things, that push the boundaries. So I am so, so looking forward to those visits. And that's a lot to pack into four days. But again, it's a testament 
to, I think, the relationship that we have that um, I leave thinking that I could have filled another two days here. Madam Undersecretary, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. So many people are referring these days to the relationship as a marriage. I guess I better get out and get married uh, so I can relate a little bit more, huh? Um, listen, you know, the UAE has some very ambitious goals and objectives. Uh, and uh, in September, they announced the projects of the 50, which are truly setting them apart, not only in the region, but in the world for the future. And the, one of the goals of the overall goals of the projects of the 50 is to become a truly global hub, not just a regional hub here in the UAE, but like if there's 10 top cities in the world 10 years from now, Abu Dhabi, Dubai being one of those top 10 cities. So after your visit and your, and your future goals for ITA, how do they, how do you see them working together to, to overlap with some of the things that the UAE is trying to achieve uh, in that regard? Some of the things, that, the complementaries, uh, adjacencies and things that you saw while you were here. I think that the complementarities are obvious, that we are both successful global cities in today's economy, but we know that we have to plan for the future economy. I was very struck in a meeting this morning when one of the government representatives talked about planning for the next 50 years. And again, as somewhat, the, I ran a planning department for a city that is just a little bit smaller in population than the Emirates, so I think a very shared challenge. And we knew that you had to deal with the issues of today, the issues that face your residents, that face your business community, but if you are not out there actively planning for the next 50 years, then you are shortchanging yourself. And so I do think that the focus that we, the, the shared focus that we have on clean technology, the focus that we have on the digital economy, we don't yet know how it will evolve, but we do know that we need now to start working with partner governments that share our, our core values of knowing that in a digital world, we have to make sure that there is trust on the part of our, our consumers in how their data is used, but also that there is a transparency and interoperability um, and a, as I mentioned before, a common way of approaching regulation so that we don't fracture. Um, Getting down from a very sort of visionary level, I think there are also some practical ways um, that we can continue working together. The team here on the ground is going to continue supporting the trade shows that come year in and year out. And you know what, for all that we think about the future, doing the basics year after year is important. And so you'll see us at Arab Health, you'll see us at IDEX. Um, we're excited that shortly before my trip, we got official sign-off to, in March of next year, March of 23, to bring a clean tech health mission. And we're going to be bringing it to the region, to three countries in the region, to the UAE, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and to Israel. And I think it speaks volumes that we can bring those three countries together um, and ha know that all of them are focused on it. We also think that the timing is so propitious because it's part of the lead up to the UAE's hosting of COP28. And um, now knowing the UAE government officials, I suspect that it's not going to be just a couple of days in November, but an entire lead up to it. Um, the, um, one area that I want to toss out there, and this might be pushing it a bit, but I believe that we and the UAE have a shared interest in meeting the huge infrastructure and development needs of other countries in the region, on the continent, and also globally. And in doing so, I think that there are significant opportunities for US firms, I see significant opportunities for investment by parties, by entities in both countries. And I think that we will 
also just be, I've, I've mentioned clean tech, but I can't mention it enough. I think that we have to double down on the environment. I think that um, climate change, addressing it, can be viewed, should be viewed as an important social goal, but there are so many business opportunities, and I hope that, and I'm pretty confident, <laughs> that the businesses in both of our countries are going to see, see that and seize it. Thank you so much, and thank you for clean tech, and I will be unashamed of saying it belongs in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> I will forever be an Abu Dhabi do kind of girl. <laughs> so we know your time is precious, but we want to kind of ask you for some key takeaways. You mentioned, of course, interoperability, yeah. and that new technologies need to be between our countries seamless, globally seamless to benefit humanity. But I want to ask a very direct question to those in the audience that want to know their takeaways. So how can Emirati and our US business partners here in the UAE and back in the USA help you and the Commerce Department of Commerce achieve the goals that you've just mentioned? Look, we at Commerce can't succeed if our business community doesn't succeed. Our business community um, represented here doesn't succeed if the Emiratis don't succeed. We are an inherently global business community. We at the Commerce Department so value our partnership with the private sector. We know that it is you who provide the good paying jobs that we so value in both countries. Um, I have to say my entire career, whether in municipal economic development or during my time at Treasury, at the US Treasury Department or here, has always been focused on jobs. Um, you're our clients. You're our local contacts for US businesses. Um, you provide us with on-the-ground insights that from Washington we would never be able to get, but that are important to our, our policy making. Um, your partners in advancing our policy priorities. With respect to clean tech, government can do a lot. I'm a firm believer in the power of government, but when we partner with you, we can do more. Um, what I would ask is please continue the conversations. It's evident that Thomas and his team know everyone in the room, but continue the conversations when things are going well, but also don't hesitate to talk to us when you think that things are going awry. Um, there are so many Americans in the room, and so you know that we have thick skins, um, and that if we're doing something that you think is wrong, could be adjusted, don't hesitate to let us know. We may not always agree, but we always want to hear. And again, toggling between a very high level and a very practical level, there's something else we want to ask you to do. Um, you know that every year we hold Select USA in the US, and this is the opportunity to, in one place, connect with the economic development or organizations from all of our states. This year is going to be held from the 26th to the 28th of June. Um, we know that Minister Van Tuk is, Al Tuk, I'm sorry, is uh, planning to lead the delegation. We note that the delegation from the Emirates is frequently the largest delegation that comes over, and so we'd urge you to come. And I'll note that this year we're having a special um, help me, Thomas, a tech, um, a tech element to it, right? Select, USA, yeah. Select tech. Select tech. And so a sector, again, that I would think would resonate with much of the business community here. So please, come. I would love to welcome you, um, not in Washington, D.C., but just a little bit over the border in Maryland. <laughs> so, so Emirati companies that want to come and be part of this delegation would talk to you, Thomas, and your team in Abu Dhabi. Uh, so that they could sign up and be part of the Emirati delegation that comes. And working with Saud, obviously, and his team in Washington as well. Is that correct? Yes. Liz? 
Well, Danny, I am very cognizant of Undersecretary's time, and I know that you have another 32 stops to make before you get on the plane. Before you go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you, Madam Undersecretary, for sharing your thoughts and your insights. And I particularly enjoyed speaking to you on the side about um, Madam Secretary, Undersecretary told me when she takes a vacation with her husband, she does industrial tours so, and Burj Khalifa type tours. So she truly walks the walk and talks the talk and it has been a pleasure to be with a woman in leadership during this week of women uh, uh, admiration month as I call it. <laughs> and, and I thank you very much for your time and your advice and your guidance for us. Danny, I look forward to our continued mutual success. I want to thank your excellencies, our distinguished attendees, of course, the wonderful Sean Murphy, Tom Bruins, our board, your board, everyone. And most importantly, it's always a conversation and a dialogue, a relationship. It's long term, long game. And this is the start of yet another successful year. And I'm going to let Danny have the last word. Thank you, Liz. I'm, I'm also going to thank the Undersecretary, and I'm going to say it is a relationship. I've been working on this relationship for 25 years or more. And we relationships, as Ambassador Alateba described the other day, uh, can go up and down. And we just all have to keep working at it. This is, we have, uh, I like to say that we have three, three legs in the stool to this relationship. And the business and trade and investment relationship is by far, uh, has been one of the strongest and the most durable over time. And we have to just keep working away at it and, and, and making it uh, the, the great for the future for those challenges, ma'am, and climate change and other things that you identified today. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks everyone in the audience and to our member companies from both Liz and I, we couldn't do what we do without your support. So thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.